Welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the channel. <sighs> Thank you so much for the last video. You guys blew it up. But welcome back to all the new subscribers. My name is Emily. If you're brand new here, welcome, welcome. Gather around children. I have a special guest today. You look like toothless. This is Ninja. Say hi to Ninja, everybody. Okay, you hate oh. All right, a little bit of quick fire shameless plug before we get into today's video. If you guys wanna go and support me, check out my Patreon in the description box. I'm gonna be doing a live with my patron there, so go check it out if you're interested in that. I also have a 15% discount on some pilot shirts. You guys can go ahead and check out my storefront for a list of basically everything that you need to get started with your aviation journey and subscribe to the channel. Okay, done. All right, what do you guys think of the new setup? It still needs like a potato queen name tag that's going to be coming up, I know, I know. All right, so today's video is going to be kind of the start of an educational series I'm looking to get started. I mean, I'm wanting some input from you guys so we can work together on this. Some of the questions that I get asked most frequently. So for today's one, we're gonna get started on how to talk to ATC. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about for today is going to be the basics and just taking a look at the overall structure of your transmissions. Then I'll be talking about some ATC do's and some ATC don'ts. And then lastly, I'm gonna share some of my actual recordings of some of the flights I've done, just to give you guys a bit of an idea of what you can look forward to in the future if you end up working as a professional pilot. All right, so let's get to it. First off, let's talk about some of the basics. So all radio calls essentially have this basic overall kind of structure. So who you're talking to, and this could be either the ATC that's controlling the environment that you're in, it could be ground, it could be tower, or it could be an uncontrolled environment. So it could be the radio that's overseeing. So the mandatory frequency that you might be on. Then you're also going to be covering who you are. So in your flight training environment, you're looking at broadcasting your type of aircraft and then your call sign. And then you're going to be talking about where you are distance from the field or your location on the fields and then lastly what is going to be your request so either you're going to be in the broadcasting mindset if it's a mandatory frequency for your uncontrolled environment or what your request is to ATC so what you'd like to achieve so those are basically the basics that we can kind of keep in the back of our mind in terms of how we're going to structure our radio calls. Then we can kind of move on and differentiate between your uncontrolled and your controlled environment. So keep in mind, I'm obviously generalizing for my Canadian people, but you guys can just look up the small, the small differences depending on if you're flying in the States or anywhere else. So in terms of your uncontrolled and your controlled differences, the biggest thing that I want you guys to kind of keep in mind is that in an uncontrolled environment, try to think of it as your broadcast your intention. So that same structure will apply. So who you're talking to, who you are, what, where you are, sorry, and what you're trying to do, but you're not really requesting anything. The way that I kind of like to think about it is try to think about like you're talking out loud to yourself about what you're about to do. And then of course, if someone chimes in, then it's up to you both to sort out your conflict resolution if there needs to be one. Whereas the difference with your controlled environment, you're really looking to be asking for permission. So to keep it simple, you write, you go back to your basics that we talked about, who you're talking to, who you are, where you are and what you're requesting. But now the focus on your request is gonna be maybe the more important aspect of your call. And another thing to let them know too, in a controlled environment, you probably wanna let them know that you have the latest weather information. So that could be in your ATIS form. Just something to keep in mind, just be polite because that ATC controller is granting you permission to do whatever it is that you are requesting. So let's talk about a couple examples for you guys. So when you're dealing with an uncontrolled environment, an example would sound like Calgary Radio, it's Cessna 172, Foxtrot Sierra, Whiskey Echo. We're currently on the main apron. We're gonna be taxiing Charlie, Alpha, Tango to the active for departure runway 27. So all I've done is just advised who I'm speaking to because there might be different aircraft on similar frequencies are on the same frequency or near you so they need to know which one you're referring to so in this case Calgary radio I'm advising who I am where I currently am and then what I'm about to do whereas if we were in a controlled environment for a similar example in this case we'd like to request to the ground control for a taxi so an example would sound something like Calgary ground it's Cessna 172 Foxtrot Sierra Whiskey Echo currently on the main apron requesting taxi to the active with information Delta 
Delta. And in that case, for a response, as another example, they're gonna go right back with the same baseline that we talked about. They might drop the first letter, and if so, you can follow suit. So in this case, they might say, Sierra Whiskey Echo, it's Calgary Ground, you're clear to taxi, Charlie Alpha Tango. Switch over to tower holding short runway 27. And then you would then respond and going kind of going back and forth. So in this case, I would just call back and say, Taxi Charlie Alpha Tango, switch over to tower holding short 27. So with a clearance, because now we're dealing with a controlled environment, we really wanna make sure that we're keeping in mind the restrictions or the instructions that we need to actually uh, say back. So in this case, because I was told to hold short of a runway, I do have to include what I'm doing. So in this case, Taxi Charlie Alpha Tango, but also that I'm gonna be holding short um, so that the controller knows that I've listened to that restriction that I might have. So really it just goes to show that most of your most of your transmissions are really just going to be the request, the instruction, and then the acceptance of that instruction on your part. So now that we've talked about some of the structure and giving you guys some examples, let's talk about some ATC do's and some ATC don't. So some of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to rush. I know a lot of people just want to kind of get it over with and they just want to say it really, really quickly, but it really doesn't help you. And it, I feel like it just kind of, it increases your anxiety when you're just rushing the whole thing. So don't rush. Make sure that you also don't accept a clearance or don't accept an instruction if you don't understand what it is that you're accepting. I know that sounds so simple, but don't start moving if you're not sure what ATC has told you to do. Make sure you don't speak quietly or you don't mumble. And I know again, at first it seems really overwhelming and it's quite daunting, but you wanna make sure that that mic is nice and close to your mouth and you're not kind of like, you know, half eating it, but you wanna make sure that it's close to your mouth and that you're not having it too far away so no one can really hear what you're saying. And then lastly, in terms of ATC don'ts, don't worry if you make a mistake. If you guys have been watching me and listening to me for a while now, you guys know that I screw up my lines on air traffic control all the time and just don't, don't worry about making a mistake. All of us do, so just, Take a deep breath and just try again. All right, now let's talk about some do's, so some things that you do wanna be focusing on when you are making transmission. So do take a nice deep breath before you make a transmission. And I know that sounds kind of silly and simple, but it truly really is going to kind of help relax you and making sure that you're gonna be transmitting what you want to be doing instead of being really, really stressed and anxious about it. So do take a deep breath. Another thing that you wanna do is to listen. So make sure that you're listening on the frequency before you make a transmission. And the reason why that's important is you really wanna make sure that you're not cutting off another aircraft or a, a conversation that's already occurring between an aircraft and air traffic control and just jump right in. Now this is always going to happen at some point, but just try to see if you can listen and pay attention before you start and transmit your own. You're also gonna be able to gain information. So if you're kind of sticking around and listening for a little bit longer, you might be able to hear what runway is active. You might be able to hear what information of ATIS is currently active. So it's a good way of gathering information before requesting more info and it reduces the workload on the air traffic control if you do so. Another thing that's really simple, but do make sure you do tune into the right frequency. <laughs> The amount of times that I've accidentally done this or the amount of times that students would do this where they're actually tuned in to the improper frequency and then wondering why they're not getting the response back that they're expecting. So make sure that you've got the proper frequency tuned in and then also make sure that the volume is up the proper level so you can actually hear what the response is instead of continuously requesting the same information over and over again. And the last tip that I'll give you guys in terms of ATC do's is do practice at home. So when I was a student and I was going through my own flight training, I used to write out my transmissions on a piece of paper so that I would have an idea of that structure and that rhythm that I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of this video. And something to keep in mind with that is don't try to memorize the actual transmissions because you're going to get into a bit of a, an issue if something comes up that's not what you had originally memorized. So writing it down or practicing it isn't about memorizing, it's just about getting comfortable with the rhythm for it. And another bonus do tip that you guys can look into is going to check out the website liveatc.net and hopefully depending on where you are you might be able to type in the frequency that you are practicing at so maybe your home airport or listening to like a similar size airport but listen into liveatc.net and go check out either the live feed that's currently there or even go and check out the archives to go and listen to yourself when you are flying and try to see if there's 
certain tips that I've mentioned that you might be able to improve on once you hear yourself on the radio. Okay, so now that we've finished kind of like the do's and the don'ts, I just wanna give you guys a couple of examples of my own transmissions that I've had. This is obviously in an airline IFR environment. So let's take a look at some of those examples. And August 3157, continue to activate Juliet Hold Turtle Lima now. Juliet holding short Lima, Encore 3157. And Encore 3157 and Juliet to hold short Lima. Encore 3157, ground taxi, Juliet Hotel Golf to the apron. Juliet Hotel Golf to the apron, Encore 3157. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed the little ATC demonstration that I just kind of provided. The most important and something that you guys just always want to keep in mind is just to enjoy the process and just know that you're going to continuously keep getting better as you keep practicing. All right, guys, that is everything for this week's educational little video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and a like if you guys found that it is going to be helping you for your air traffic control communications coming up. I would love for you guys to comment below some suggestions for some upcoming video series or educational series that you guys might want to see on this channel please subscribe if you haven't already do so and I will see you guys in the next video potato is out